Hello and thanks, you, thanks for visiting the Dear Adobe blog. Um, in today's post we're going to focus on one of Adobe Illustrator's key features and that is the clipping mask. Uh, what we'd like to cover is how it handles certain situations. If In today's post what we have here is a bowl of spaghetti clipped by a circle and that that circle is in front of the word spaghetti. So the question is uh, if I wanted to click on the word spaghetti behind the bowl or to the side of it even, what will happen? Well, this is what happens actually. You get a real large spaghetti mess. And so the question is, why does that happen? And uh, what uh, can be done to prevent that or work around that? The reason why that happens is because the way Adobe handles clipping masks is it doesn't actually completely obscure the information. In fact, if you turn off preview mode, you can see that the information is still there. It's not clipped at all, really. It's still there. It's just clipped for viewing purposes. So if we turn on viewing purpose, the view, the preview, you can see that it's clipped just for viewing purposes. If you look at other programs, let's say if we hold, if we look at um, Adobe InDesign and we click on the object in front well it clicks on the object but it doesn't get to the word spaghetti if we click in the holes it doesn't get to the word spaghetti but if we click on the word but still in the area of the information that is obscured we can get to it so InDesign does handle this quite a bit better because the information that you don't want to see that is being obscured and hidden does not get in the way of the object behind so you can still edit the object behind the clipped object. Let's look at Adobe Photoshop. In Adobe Photoshop it's even more forgiving. I've got a clipping mask here and if I click on the past spaghetti like I have here and highlight it I can click in front of the spaghetti itself and move the word spaghetti around. We'll undo that. I can click on in a hole and move this word spaghetti around. I can click to the side and move spaghetti around. Now of course in this situation the word spaghetti is on an object all by itself and in all fairness there are ways around this situation in Adobe Illustrator. For example I could click on the clipped object and hide it just so that I can get to the object behind. And so if I show it again, bring it back, or I can lock it by hitting Command 2 and locking the object and then I can move the object around. Uh, and then I, I'll unlock this so that everything's unlocked. But in doing so, there, the problem is that there may be other things that you have hidden throughout the course of working with your document that come back as well. And those things you may not want to bring back. Unfortunately, Adobe Illustrator is not selective in bringing those things back. You have to bring them all back or none of them back or you have to sift through hundreds of layers in your layers palette trying to find the exact ones that you're looking for to turn on and turn off or lock or unlock. So in today's poll uh, I'd like for you if you would please to select how you would like Illustrator to handle this type of situation in the future. The first option is no, this or yes, this uh, is okay with me. It doesn't get in my way. No, the second uh, option is no. I do not like this feature. It gets in my way. I wish there was a better way of handling it. And the third option is to say uh, that you believe that it should be a user preference where people can turn on or off the ability to see the large spaghetti mess that seems to get in the way of objects underneath mass clipped items. And so with that. Uh, I thank you for uh, visiting the Dear Adobe uh, blog and hope to see you next time.